Good evening, folks. This is your top science news for the last three weeks. We've had some new animations, earthquake news, solar, climate, and cosmic stories, too. Let's begin with the new ability to pretend you're on an exoplanet. The exoplanet exploration system is fun to play with, and we are starting nice and aesthetically pleasing here for a moment's mental break, because the accelerator is about to get punched. The top astrobiology news comes from Mars, where methane and other compounds have put the next rover's chem lab in focus, as it could deliver the news of cellular life on Mars when it does arrive. For those who have been confounded by 95% of electroquake papers being behind paywalls, these scientists toss this one on archive. The electric changes in the atmosphere before earthquakes are unmistakable. Speaking of earthquakes, it appears that our insistence on looking deep first has some support. The asthenosphere drags the crust on top of it, where anomalous speed changes below come before crustal quakes. That's what we recognize as blot echoes. More info at quakewatch.net. There was the latest confirmation of potential space weather effects via cosmic ray radiation, primarily a constant low-dose bombardment, but which can affect carcinogenicity, fetal development, and cognitive function. While most people have been focusing on Fuego and Hawaii in terms of volcanoes, a key study was released describing volcanic aerosol index and how we haven't taken a big drop in global temperatures due to volcanoes in much longer than expected, leaving the global warming pause even harder to explain while offering an excellent explanation for the record El Nino of 2016. Now on that note, if you recall how Intellicast called out temperature data shenanigans in 2009, how German professor Dr. Ewart saw it in NASA's changes in 2015, and Dr. Bates blew the whistle from inside NOAA on the fraud ongoing last year, we have now seen the American Geophysical Union publish a paper by Maryland professors demonstrating that so much fiddling has gone on that global temperature records no longer match each other. Kind of a problem for our faith in their conclusions. Let's check out some of the top videos complementing the news the last three weeks, starting with the newly discovered F4 layer. These detectors are widely used across the globe, but now, for the first time, we see an energetic signature farther above our heads than we believed. A critical look at Sprite Lightning revealed how Billy's done it in the lab already, both the top side and the bottom, just based on changing the density of the air chamber. An amazing story came out about solar Rosby waves, and it set off an incredible connection of structure and activity between Earth and Sun, with counter-rotating cells up there, just like we see down here. And on Earth, since these are where the currents go up and down, it is rational to assume that the IMF's entry and exit points are at those cells as well. In a combination topic video, we highlighted a Chinese weather modification effort in the first part. My personal worry was that it would work to quash a fire raging in an ancient protected forest, but that the news would cause Americans to beg for it with our fires. It's one thing to be a covert operation, another if you beg for it. Then the top three videos of the last three weeks include two space weather health stories. First, the mechanism of how severe solar storms cripple your brain's ability to deal with stress and panic, and then a cosmic ray examination to demonstrate why both kinds of space weather can have their effects, but also how each are very different. Lastly, on the video front was our earthquake outlook for the rest of the year. Unfortunately, some scary patterns from the past are cropping up once again. Check it out if you missed it. Let's move on to cosmology because it was a horrible month for dark matter, and a great one for dust. The Xenon 1T experiment came back with no dark matter detections, the largest Xenon detection attempt ever. And speaking of large detection attempts, scientists were called geniuses when they figured out how to use atomic clocks to search for dark matter with essentially an Earth-sized detector. They might be geniuses, but they still didn't find any dark matter. We do have a bolo out on him, but thus far he has proven far more elusive than the world's scientists would have imagined. And the observations of the cosmos are not helping, adding to the polar alignment and co-rotation of galactic satellites. In defiance of dark matter models, it turns out the satellites are also missing by about half. Imagine needing to find six more Magellanic clouds around the Milky Way to make it all work. Uh-uh. Meanwhile, dust was pegged as hiding both distended stellar objects near the center of the galaxy, called G-objects, and also the finer points of the cosmic jets from active galactic nuclei, which both were thought to be something other than looking through a dust veil. We learned that all these polyaromatic hydrocarbons in space we heard about in the news are actually diamond dust, whoops, and on the last scale, we finally heard the words I'd waited to hear. You cannot apply generalizations or approximations to cosmic dust. They're like people or blades of grass. Each bit is unique in size, composition, reflectivity, and shine. Prepare for more stories like that in the months ahead. I will see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.